Well, howdy diddly dandy there, chums. Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I want to review Towers of Agasba while playing Towers of Agasba. So I'm just picking up some wooden planks. There we go. And um, the basic premise of Towers of Agasba is you come to this island that your people are from, and you've got to return life, buildings, and ecosystems back to said island that's been inhabited by the cursed sort of withered type areas and you've got to sort of destroy that curse you're going to be given seeds to grow and plant and grow your own trees in and around your own town and it's it's a pretty magical whimsical experience i mean uh, there is an area where i've built well pl planted a load of trees along here i'm just waiting for them to grow oh, they're not there anymore and there's quite a lot of bugs with the actual game itself because it is sort of like a, an early access title this game you are going to come across a few sort of bits of jankiness but i kind of feel at the moment that sort of adds to the charm and it is a little bit frustrating to say the least though i mean all this area here i've planted out with seeds that i was going to harvest this morning and they all seem to have vanished so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit save on the game and then I'm going to quit out to the main screen. And then I'm going to reload into the game. And I'm going to hope that all those seeds and all the work that I did reappears. And this happens quite often, not only with your towns, but also with the uh, wildlife and your ecosystems. Okay, well, I've loaded back in. And you can see a load of things popping up at the top of the screen there. Um which is pretty weird and none of my seeds that i've planted have actually appeared so a lot of the work that i did all the seeds that i planted all the things that i did just haven't actually spawned in so inside of towers of a gas bar you are going to be harvesting quite a lot of materials and you are going to be traveling long distances to actually get those materials now you can use the fast travel system which you have to unlock by going into withered areas of the game and um, taking on bad guys and clearing withered areas and uh, taking out these sort of like little scrouts there you go now I've got some really withered armor protection there and you saw they attacked me and actually hurt themselves which is pretty darn funny that's kind of why I laughed oh look there's an iron boulder here so if I want to craft iron tools I need iron there you go just grab some iron now this area is quite late in game but all the biomes inside of this are quite beautiful in their own way. I mean, this one's less beautiful. But what I want here is these things. So these things over here sometimes give strange seeds. And strange seeds, when you plant them out, can, plant, uh, can give you some pretty awesome stuff. So I need a fairly decent shovel. Uh-oh, I've got another bad guy trying to attack me there. Let's uh, dig this out of the ground and I'll show you if I... Oh, let's see if we get a strange seed, shall we? Get up! I would like a strange seed, please. Yes, we've got two strange seeds there, people. See that? So that's pretty darn sweet. And there's loads of these here, so I'm going to go dig them all up. And there's some emerald here as well. You can see the emerald over there. But it could be that this spade breaks in a moment. Now, there are much harder enemies inside of this game. Like over here, you can see this, this strange hand and that dog-like creature. Both of those are probably going to have a go at me. And ciao, ciao! taking him out i have got the iron sword which is a high level game item you are going to get some pretty darn gnarly resources ouch yeah right go on then hiya yeah you want some freaking have it got him okay right i better take care of these guys so some wildlife will try and get you as well so Whoa! Okay. Come on in. Ha! Yeah! You get to learn their attack patterns. And then they're easy to peasy. Okay. There we go. So there is some combat inside of this. Is it any good? Yeah, it's alright. It's got moments of um, bugginess that might catch you out. It's got some pretty bad camera angles that might catch you out. And there's no auto lock on which is a right pain in the neck. You can see here, my shovel just broke. Now you can be in the middle of nowhere and not have enough resources to build yourself another shovel, which can be a real pain. As you can see there, I need a little bit more wood, I need 10 wood, well nine wood, to actually make my shovel again. 
and then I gotta come all the way back here to dig because sometimes you can't find normal wood in an area like this which is end of level game which is a right pain so there's a lot of to and fro in you've got to plan your journeys before you come out so here's the fast travel system now the loading times between places used to be really slim hardly any loading times at all and you could just jet about the place and it wasn't much of a problem now when i hit a place that i want to go to you see how long this takes but the actual devs over on um, discord are actually talking about this issue right now and they're trying to get it sorted the reason why they've made it load longer is they need to reload everything into cache and bring it all back out again however you've probably noticed that a lot of my towns where i've planted a load of common seeds and planted a load of rare seeds like those ones i was just trying to get they've all despawned all the planted areas that i did from yesterday a whole day's work of gathering seeds gone i mean it was something that i was doing ambulantly while i was doing other things but at the same time it is so annoying that has probably set me back by about two hours of work and that's what it feels like sometimes this game it feels like a second job it feels like work and it's not because of the game itself because the game itself is freaking brilliant ha huh, look my resources are back here you go this is what I was hoping to see. This is all my rare seeds. They've all come back. Freaking awesome. Okay, well, I should be able to pick these. And I'm going to get loads of cotton and fibre and all sorts of these. So they've come back. But that's taken quite a lot of play of the game for them to come back. Oh, I've got a hard stump right there that I could dig out of the ground. Sweet. Awesome. Well, that's, that's kind of rectified itself. But... There's a, there's, there's a lot of little mini workarounds. There's a lot of little mini workarounds, a lot of little mini gripes. Things that you just got to get yourself used to happening. Let's go see if my common seeds are here. And if they are, I can get a load of alley leaf. And if I can get all my alley leaf, I should be able to build some windmills at my new town. And I'll show you some of the building aspects of this game. Okay, well, let's pick this up. Nice one. And I'll reconvene in a moment. There you go. Got my alley leaf. Yeah, okay, chums, this is my new fledgling town, and all I've done here is put down a crafting bench, which I had to craft myself. But from this actual crafting bench, you can then craft buildings. And this is why I was getting the alley leaf and also wooden planks. I wanted to make a grand windmill. So let's make a grand windmill. Boom. And uh, then I can place down said grand windmill. Now, at the moment, there is no sort of uh, interiors to these buildings. You just sort of build the building and that's kind of it. I kind of want to stick the windmill on top of that hill up there. Let's see if I can, I don't know whether I can do this. I've never tried, but I give it a go. After climbing all the way up here, it's actually a lot smaller than I thought it was. And this windmill is a lot bigger than I thought it was. So no, it's not going to go up here, but pretty cool idea if I could have, yeah. Okay, now I've found the perfect place for it to go. This is sort of in between one of my other towns and this town, it will sort of conjoin them both pretty darn awesome so these buildings at the moment have no interiors and a lot of them are just to score you culture points to up the grading of your town now that's kind of the town building in a nutshell you can see here there's that lovely windmill that i just put down that's my new town down by the coast there i mean look at the vistas in this game the game is so blinking beautiful it really is now the climbing system inside of this kind of reminds me a little bit of the climbing system of Shadow of the Colossus with the stamina bar and all that sort of shenanigans and I think they've took inspiration from that. Now when you are traversing this landscape you can glide. Look, I've got a little glider and that I think takes inspiration from a lot of games but more so Breath of the Wild. It's also got a day and night cycle as you can see. It's now night time. Now, I've only got one campsite, which is at a different base, so I'm going to sleep until morning. But this is my farm area, and as you can see here, I've, built, I've got like little planting pots, I've got little creature pens, I've got places where I can plant food over here. It's, it's everything you can imagine a planting simulator would be in a roundabout way. And I put all these raised beds where I chose to put them as well. So there is that as well. So there's quite a lot of creativity that goes into your town modelling and your town building. So if you enjoy that, you're definitely going to enjoy this. Now I love all the sounds. You can hear the, the crickets cheeping, the birds corking. But here we go, here's my tent. And I can pass time inside of tents. If you want to pass the time, you can. And you've got lots of choices to do so. 
Now there is a barbers over here. You can choose yourself different haircuts. Um, there's not a lot of haircuts to choose from. Character customization is said to be coming next year, first quarter, I believe. But at the moment, you play as a female, and you can choose yourself a new haircut. So I'm going to go for long, and I'm going to go for the lost soul. Right, there we go. And kaboom! I've now got a new haircut. There we are. Okay, right. That, that's pretty much all the customization you can do right now. You can change your outfits. You, you can craft all different sorts of outfits. They've got different perks. Some make you swim for longer. Some make you climb for longer. This one gives me withered protection so I can roam around, explore the landscape without worrying too much about dying when I encounter a nest, which is another thing that's inside of this game. You have to destroy withered nests to cleanse the region. And when you've cleansed regions, you can then uh, plant colossal seeds and you can bring back the ecosystem system when you first arrive here on the, this island it is barren there is nothing here and i've planted this this giant tree this this is this is me that's planted that and the way that you do it you sort of, you can climb these and you've got what's called amity which is above my head here which is like a life force and you get that for planting seeds and doing good stuff getting rid of bug nests and all sorts of other things you get amity and you use that amity to put into these. There you go. I'll put one into here. And hopefully we're going to see this tree then grow. Let's see if it grows now. There we go. That grows bigger. And as things grow bigger, the landscape continues to grow out. You get more rarer resources start appearing, but not only that, it draws in newer creature types to your area. I mean, it's like this. I don't think I've ever seen one of these before. So I'm going to dig that up. Uh-oh, we've got a big creature that's going to try and kill me. He's 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 a one-hitter. If he hits me just once, I'm dead. This is like Monster Hunter World now. And there you go. That's the, that's the thing with the lock-on, you know? Whoa! No, you don't, mate. Whoa! I've done good to beat that guy. If he hit me once, seriously, I would have died. And no joke, that, that would have been game over. Well, I would have respawned back at town, which is just over there. It wouldn't be a major hardship. But you don't lose anything, Ivy. You don't lose any of your amity or anything like that. It's not like a Souls game. But there you go. And any new trees and any new shrubberies that you dig up, they all go into what's called your Shemudex. And in here, you can see what the creatures like to, you know, what, what they give you, what sort of area that they reside in. You, there's a lot of fish to get. I haven't done much fishing, as you can see, so I might have to do a couple of episodes doing fishing. There's wildlife that's in the air as well, airborne fauna to scan. Yeah, you have to scan creatures and and, and you build out your shamudex. You, you can slowly work out what all of the life is here and all of the minerals. It's such a great catalogue, it really is. You've also got this fill orders, which keeps track of everything that you need to gather. So if you can't remember what you need to gather, it's nice and easy to go back in here and understand what you need to gather. For an early access game, they have thought of a lot. Now, I know that I highlighted all the bugs at the start of the game, but the first thing that I encountered when I logged in today was bugs. Otherwise, if you have a bug-free morning, you're going to have a very different experience. I mean, look at this. Look at this ecosystem over here. Look how beautiful this place is. Now, this is this is early morning. You wait till the sun comes up. This looks freaking insanely cool. But this is like a tropical biome. So there's tropical, there's arid, and then there's temperate. And temperate is, you know, quite nice, like almost rainforesty. But this is this is insane. This is like jungle, isn't it? But yeah, if I wanted to scan these, I've got this little telescope thing. And you, you scan your creatures that way. Well, it looks like I've got all the creatures that are here at the moment. Different uh, different days, I've seen different creatures. Oh, pink bud. Let's, let's dig that up. Have I actually dug up a pink bud before? Is this going to be a new Shimu Dex entry? And it's, it's this sort of thing that I love. You come along, you see something, you're like, I don't think I've dug that up. It's like this thing. What the fudge is that? Oh, it's just a strange seed floating in here. Cool. So that must have been a, a plant that I harvested the other day and it didn't register. So a lot of these I've seen before. I think that's that's part of that route, isn't it? Yes, it is. And you can climb all this tree. And up there are some rare seeds that you can plant and get even rarer plants the next day that you come. It's, it's a forever changing game. It's an evolving game and it evolves the way that you play. I mean, look at this guy. Isn't he a cool creature? 
Sadly, you've only got one mount inside of the game at the moment. I'll show you him. Uh, there you go. Where is he? There he is. And you can ride this guy around and travel across the landscape, which is pretty darn nice. But look at some of these larger creatures that I've got coming in now. There's a really large one here that comes every now and again. It's brilliant. But what a beautiful game. And look, I'm even running at speed. And its frame rate is still okay. Now, considering this is like an indie studio, it's not a triple A game. And it only cost me 25 quid. It's in early access. I, I've, I've had so much fun with this. I, I've spent so many hours inside of this. Okay, now the world map itself, that's the first island. That's where you start. And this is the main island here. But I'm thinking that they're probably going to extend all of this in future DLCs. And the thing that I don't like about this map at the moment is you can't place custom waypoints. You can use the filter at the bottom of the screen to filter stuff out so you can see a little bit better of what you would like to do. But that's about it. That's all you can do. You have got a little mini map in the bottom corner there. A little radial to sort of give you an indication of which way you're heading. So I'm heading south at the moment. And I'm going to take you over to a whimsical character inside of the game just to show you the extent of what some of the characters are going to be like that you're going to be interacting with. Okay, so I've gone down to the coastline. Now you can fully explore the waters. I was mentioning about doing fishing earlier. I'll just show you the diving mechanic inside of this game. So once you're in water, you can just press L3, dive down, and you're exploring the oceans. And down here are loads of resources that I haven't even really explored all too much. I've just got some kelp there. But yeah, you're going to see fish under here. You're going to see biodiversity that's not the same on land. It's another freaking biome. So yeah, knock yourself out with underwater exploration, which I need to do a heck of a lot more of, admittedly. Just got to be careful of your stamina. Right, the character that I want to show you is over on that island over there. So I've got to swim all our way out there. Just found a whole new plant that I just added to my Shemudex. Swimming under the water here. Freaking awesome. I had a little bit of exploration anyway, people. Okay, and here we go. This reminds me of that bit in Never Ending Story. How brilliant is that? It's very cool. But yeah, giant turtle creature you're going to be interacting with. I mean, you can see there the camera got a little bit glitched, but yeah, hopefully these sort of things will be polished out in time because it does sort of break the immersion a little at times. But at the same time, when you've got something as whimsical and as magical as this sort of interaction, it's pretty darn nice. Now, the only thing I don't like is if you read the text there, the way of humans is to destroy. If you do not feel this way, perhaps you are a defective human. You know, which is... There's a whole withered going on right now. You'd think she'd be more concerned with the withered than the humans, but no, she's got a real sort of angst towards the humans, and that comes across as a bit preachy inside of this game. So if you don't mind a little bit of preachiness and a little bit of, oh, humans are bad, then that's fine. There is a little bit of that inside this game. It's not enough to really put you off or want you to put the controller down. But at the same time, it is in there, just as a bit of a heads up. Uh, coral stone. Have I picked this up before? Oh, I guess I have. My inventory is now full, which is, a, which is another thing with this game. There's a lot of inventory management because your inventory is so small. So, yeah, that's another thing to have as a bit of a heads up. You can build storage containers and you can have them back at your bases. But there's no storage containers like on your donkey type mount or anything like that. I'm hoping that they add that in. I'm really hoping they add that in. So at least when you're on the go, there's another way of putting things into storage. Because there's quite a lot of times where it's popped up with inventories for when I'm exploring a new area and I just haven't thought before I've set on off on my today's adventure to screw some stuff away into storage. But you see this big bridge that goes all the way from one island to the other? Who repaired that? And now there's, there's times inside this game where you're going from place to place thinking, I did that. I did that. It's like building those, well, planting those giant trees. Whenever I see those each day, I'm like, I did this. Or I'm at my town, I'm like, I did this. There's so many moments of that. 
this game, if you're into accomplishment and feeling like you've accomplished something, I get a lot of sense of, I've, I've did that, throughout this whole thing. It feels worth it. The hours that you plough into this game in gaining the resources and doing the grind, going backwards and forwards, because the landscapes are so lush and because they're riddled with resources and you have to commit those resources to memory because you haven't got any um, way of putting down your own custom waypoints mainly, it, it, just plough, it just sort of plays into it though. You kind of know the landscape. It starts to build its own personality. This world, to me, now has its own personality. Each area, each biome feels right. And every now and again, you're going to come across something. You see like these circling of birds. If you see any birds circling, it means that there's something of interest there. You know, it doesn't highlight it on your map with something giant and shiny. You've got to go and look at why the birds are circling. And look, there we go. We've got something there as a little bit of a sparkle to give you an indication of where you need to be. But all this play plays into the law, and there's a relic museum that you can put all this sort of stuff into. And uh, once you've got enough relics, it builds a statue inside of the relic hall and it gives you a load of lore. So if you like lore, if you like story, if you like whimsical characters, this game is also for you. So it's got base building, it's got combat, it's got a sense of achievement, it's got a heck of a lot going for it. As long as you're okay with an early access game that is riddled with a few bugs, and if you don't mind, the resource grind. And there is a resource grind. It's, it's part and parcel of it. And some of those resources are awesome. Some of those resources are just lumps of stone. Or, if you're very lucky, limestone. No, inside some of these, sometimes you get gold as well, but there we are. Yeah, my inventory is full. Yeah. And then you've got to make hard choices of what you want to keep, what you don't want to keep. Or you can scrap it. And with scrap, you can then turn it into gold dust. So there's that as well. There's, there's a lot to this game. You're probably getting that from this video, in fact, people. So there's still a lot of this island that I need to explore. I've done every single major quest, but I still haven't built up my final town. I haven't got my ecosystems to the highest level they can obtain, and I haven't investigated the whole of the islands as yet. So there's still a heck of a lot for me to do, and I'm finding more to do. I've been held enough doing this review until I've 100 percented done this early access game, because I thought early access is not going to be a lot of content. Boy, was I wrong. This, is, this has kept me busy and kept me really busy, and I'm, I'm freaking loving it. I'm, I, I'm thinking of ending off, but at the same time, there's so much more that I, I probably haven't shown you. But you know what? That's probably a good thing. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but this is my town that I built, and I am proud of it. I think this is beautiful, the way that I've laid this out and what I've done here. I've got all this to harvest later, all these uh, down here. I'm hoping to get some more strange seeds, replant them, get some more amity. Yeah, it's a brilliant game, and I've got a whole playlist. This is my 40th video just on guide type stuff. If I had to rate this, it's difficult because it's early access. Okay. But for the amount of money I paid, 25 quid, and for the amount of hours that I've had in this, I've had well over 40 hours in this game now. I'm going to say this game is worth like a, an 8 out of 10 because of the bugs, because of some of the polish, because of some of the jankiness. And you saw earlier some of the reloads that I had to do. That takes away from it. And then there's a little bit of the immersion breaking with the camera angles. Again, it's down to polish and bugs. And the developers need people to jump into early access, invest in the game, show that there's promise, show that there's reason to continue with this game. And they've got a whole roadmap for next year. If you like what you've seen here, know that you'll be part of the journey if you invest in this game and you're going to have a great time inside of here if you like this sort of thing if you like cozy survival crafting games because that's another thing you don't have to actually cook food to eat to live you've got a health bar down at the bottom there you can make food and all that does is add health back to your bar there's no oh i'm thirsty oh i'm hungry there's none of that so there is a little bit but it's only to give yourself health back if you're worried about that aspect and there's some brilliant characters inside of this game just to interact with uh, i could go on all day uh, but i need to end off 
I've given this an 8 out of 10 and I think it's a much deserved 8 out of 10 and I think after another year's worth of development throughout 2025 this game is going to shape up to be a bit of a gem. I kind of think this is going to be a No Man's Sky type story with this one. I really like it. This has really captured a heart and it's, it's up there in my favourite games of 2024. It's not going to be for everyone. But hopefully you've seen enough to know whether it's for you. And if it is, there is also multiplayer. Multiplayer is very buggy, but it does work. And I'm doing multiplayer with Mr. Kettle, Ninja John Dojo, every Tuesday. So, yeah, and you can have four players in a team. So, there we are. Anyway, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.